my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Ananya Bakshi. Ananya is a sophomore at Nashua High School South. She's very studious and likes taking many difficult classes. She's very talented at playing the piano and she's been playing for 10 years. Please welcome Ananya Bakshi. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ananya, and I'm a sophomore at Nashville High School South. I'd like to thank Antra for that inspirational speech and for introducing me. Today I'm going to be talking about the telephone pole outside my house, which I refer to as the curse pole. <laughs> I've had a lot of unusual experiences with the telephone pole outside my house, and I'm going to be telling you about a few of them. I'll be talking about car crashes, fires, gatherings of police cars, sledding and biking accidents, and one incident with my dog, Max. A few years ago, when I had just moved into the house, my brother and I were playing outside when five police cars showed up and parked right next to the telephone pole. The policemen jumped out of the cars wearing their bulletproof vests and yelled at us to go inside. The entire neighborhood was put on lockdown. We watched in horror from the window as they arrested my neighbor, she who must not be named, because she was chasing her husband around with a gun. She had just found out her husband was having an affair, and they caught her right next to the telephone pole. Her husband ended up moving to Florida with his new wife after he bailed her out of jail, and now she lives in a big house with a fancy porch that she likes to drive all around the cul-de-sac. I used to be scared of her, but she's actually pretty nice. That winter, my brother and I were shoveling the driveway, and she came over with her snowblower. I ran inside because I was worried she might try to snowblow us. But she cleared our whole driveway, which was really nice of her since it's so long. That same winter, my neighbors were driving their new car very fast down the street, which was covered in black ice. Of course, they went skidding right into the telephone pole. My brother ran outside to try to help, but he slipped down our own driveway, which was unsalted, and he got a few scrapes and bruises. So that caused a lot of financial and physical pain. The following winter, I was sitting in my room playing the piano when I saw an orange flickering light coming through the window. I looked outside and I was terrified to find that the telephone pole was on fire. <laughs> I screamed out to my parents to call the police, but <clears throat> thankfully the, the fire went out before the fire department arrived. Unfortunately, a squirrel and tree died in that incident. I watched the squirrel crawl across the wire on the telephone pole right into the middle of the raging inferno. I'm sure a fox had some good grilled squirrel for dinner that night. Yeah. <laughs> the tree was my neighbor's and they ended up having to cut it down because it caught fire when the pole caught fire. That same winter, I really wanted to go sledding at Roby Park, but my parents didn't have time to take us. So I decided it would be a good idea to go sledding on our own front lawn, which is a very steep hill. But my mom said it would be way too dangerous. So one day, when she was at work and my dad was on a business trip, I told my brother, we should try it now. <laughs> so we went outside with our sleds, and looking down the steep slope, I decided it would be safer to go diagonally down the hill instead of straight down into the street where cars could run us over. So I volunteered to go first, but the second I got on the board, I knew it was a terrible idea. The sled was going so fast that I could not stop it, and I ended up crashing face first into the telephone pole. <laughs> My mom had always told me to face my problems, and I guess I did that day. <laughs> <laughs> but my brother didn't do anything to help. He just stood at the top of the hill and laughed at me. It was a traumatic experience. So those are the incidents in winter, but summer hasn't been all that great either. One summer, my brother and I were racing our bikes around, and there had been recent, recently been an alert for a kidnapper in the area, driving around a blue Ford F-150. Sure enough, that day, a blue Ford F-150 came down our street, and I immediately raced my bike home. I cut across my neighbor's lawn, trying to get to my garage quickly, but I was so focused on the car that I ended up smashing face first into the telephone pole again. As usual, I wasn't wearing my helmet, and I ended up splitting my lip. But I still managed to get to my garage, and I locked all the doors and windows. I left my brother outside to fend for himself against the kidnapper. <laughs> I wasn't about to let the kidnapper in the house with him if he tried to come back in. The last incident I'll be talking about is one with my dog, Max. Max had just finished doing his training school at PetSmart, 
Actually, he dropped out. But <laughs> I decided to let him off of his leash one day in the backyard so that we could play fetch. But Max immediately ran across the street and started chasing after the lady who was walking and talking on the phone. She was terrified of dogs and she started running in circles, but Max thought she was playing a game, so he chased her around. I went across the street to try to get him back, and I managed to get him back to our side. But he ran underneath the telephone pole wire, the one that holds the pole to the ground, trying to escape from me, and I followed him. But I didn't realize the wire was so low to the ground, and I ended up banging my head right on it and getting a huge mark right here, just like Harry Potter. So in conclusion, I've had a lot of funny and slightly tragic experiences with the pole. I've told you about six of these, including car crashes, fires, police arrests, biking and sledding accidents, and one incident with my dog, Max. Every day I look at the pole and I'm filled with fear and dread, and I really hope that someday it will be cut down. Thank you for listening. Awesome. <laughs>